What's going on, guys? This is Bruce Matson, your host of the show. The show doesn't have a name yet, but that's all cool. I like to talk about fantasy football, football in general. I like to rant, rave, and all that kind of stuff. Go off topic. If that's something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Today, I just want to rant on Will Fuller and him getting suspended due to his PD, PED juice. Pretty much he's out. Of, he's done for the season pretty much, especially for fantasy. Six-game suspension. We're at the tail end of the season. He's done, though, especially for us. And what's been really sad about this is throughout his career, he's been often injured. And this looked like it was going to be the year where he could put it together and really prove to us or show us what we thought he could be, which is a high-end wide receiver one who has a lot of upside. And at the wide receiver eight right now currently, that's what's been happening. And then, boom, we get the news yesterday. He gets slapped with this suspension for PED use. We don't know what he was taking. We don't know what was happening. We do have a suspect Instagram post. I think it's Instagram. I don't know my grams and my social medias that perfectly. But Will Fuller tried to defend himself saying that it was something was tainted or something was given to him that he wasn't aware of. All that being said... He needs. He is in control of what goes in his body. He, it, it's on him, no matter what he says. And if he was taking something, he should just own up to it. If he, if he's hitting that needle, if it's on the sauce, just let us know. You're getting a six-game suspension, no matter what. There's no upside in playing the. Oh, this is a tainted supplement game, or whatever you're trying to do. It just tell the truth. My gut instinct is letting me feel that he knows what he was taking and he's been taking it all along to get him through the season to help him not get injured as often. And the NFL drug testing policies or how they do things is not as stringent as some other sports. And they can, and players can work around that a little easier. So there are more players that are on the sauce manipulating the system a lot more. And Will Fuller just happened to get caught, point blank. I would have a lot more respect if he just came out and said, yeah, I got caught, this is what happened, and go on with his day. It's neither here or there. It's 2020. We see news like this. It's not a big deal anymore. And we, we go on with our day and move on to the next thing. Going forward, you have to value them a lot higher than we did in the 2020 offseason. So this offseason, even though he got hit with that six-game suspension, he, he didn't get hit with a big injury. However, like the... His training protocols or his supplemental or supplement protocols are going to change. So I do not know if what he was doing was helping him recover quicker and preventing him from getting injured this year. So we may want to proceed with some caution. There is an injury history. There are pre-existing conditions from previous years. So we're not really out of the woods from the injury bug for Will Fuller. However, the upside's bright. The upside's been consistent here recently, and there's a lot to love. Once the dust settles from the market in Dynasty Fantasy Football, where he's going in drafts, then we'll see where or where not he'll be able to be bought at. But right now, we just want to be cautious. I like Will Fuller a lot. I was buying him a lot in redraft. I thought his price was at a great spot because the injuries were already baked into there the pre-existing conditions that he's had from the previous years i say pre-existing conditions and not injury prone because injury prone is just a a weird label that we put on players because technically all players are injury prone because they're grown men running into each other so everyone's prone to injury however pre-existing conditions means that 
from an insurance standpoint, because that, that's where I got that term from, these players previously got injured, which is a condition they had to deal with. And this is something that actually happened that could impact them going forward, but could not. But we can't like discount that idea of them getting re-injured or a previous injury causing another injury from happening, if that makes sense. If not, it's all cool. But Will Fuller's injury history was baked into his price point in this offseason. And when healthy, he is able to produce wide receiver one results as you can see here wide receiver eight on the season and prior he was the guy that was labeled as the best best ball guy to have on your team because in 2019 18 17 or whatever when he was healthy he'd have those blow up games those wide receiver one games where he put up 30 40 fantasy points that is that's just what will fuller is and with him being consistently healthy and him being able to do that extrapolated throughout a whole season that makes him a very desirable asset i am willing to dance with will fuller at the right price point every single year i like him i don't think his price is going to go over the moon and dynasty i think if anything if you don't have him on your roster and you're looking to obtain him through trade this ped situation is great it is great. It's going to make his numbers look a little wonky. It's going to create some suspicion in his Dynasty Fantasy football manager's mind or his redraft manager's mind or whatever. And it may allow you to get him at a cheaper price pat tag than what you could have got him for if he would have played a full 16. Because if he played a full 16, his value would have shot up there even higher than what it would be or will be come January, February, March, April when there's nothing to do. And we're just looking at 2020 football stats all day long trying to figure out what 2021 is going to be, but we don't know. That being said, this isn't too bad for fantasy football for a long-term perspective because it may create some buying opportunities depending on on your league your market whatever just want to look at things objectively here i want to thank you guys for watching the show make sure to hit that subscribe button i'm sure many of you guys are wondering what the hell is this room like i'm sure so back there that trash magnet of a mess back there I have a wood-burning stove, so the cardboard there is kindling for fires. I also have some mess right back there. It kind of needs cleaned up. This, is, this isn't like a living room. This is kind of like a makeshift office area. I have like an open floor plan in my house. So this is where people exit the house, drop off stuff. So mess is kind of accumulate here. I have a little desk for my daughter where she plays at, and things get messed up. I also work here. So my work desk is here, and it's an L-shaped desk, so it's pretty big. So I got random stuff all over while I'm working. So things look kind of crazy. But the reason why that mess is back there is because I like to set fires in my house. And that's why I got a Rubik's Cube. I got random stuff always here. Like you may see a Nerf gun or whatever. Sometimes when I'm working, I like, I, I like to pop shots at my daughter, let, let her know, hit her with that Nerf gun. Or I like to try and solve a a Rubik's Cube every now and again, but I'm not successful at that. Don't expect much out of me other than fantasy football knowledge. Thank you for listening. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode, and I'll catch you next time.